Hello YouTube family. Welcome to another Narcs Fiber Live video. In this one, speaking about how the narcissist is haunted by your departure, by you leaving them. Before I get into it, please hit the thumbs up button down below to show your support. It's very important as it does help the YouTube algorithm to get this message out there so that other viewers, other survivors will be able to see it as well. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click all notifications to be notified when I go live in the future. The narcissist is haunted by your departure. You just gotta look at it like this. They had all of this time with you. Think of yourself like a project, a partnership, a relationship. When you get into a relationship, a partnership, what do you do? You have an opportunity to invest your time, energy, effort, maybe money and resources into not only yourself, but another person as well, so that you can build and grow together. And they had that opportunity with you. Time went by and what happened? They failed. They didn't manage to succeed with you. They didn't manage to build anything substantial, anything worthwhile. And yet they invested all of this time, all of this energy, all of this effort. And what did it amount to? It's like, in the beginning, they idealized you. They love bombed you, but then they couldn't sustain it. They couldn't keep that act up for long. And that's why they then turned against you. They then began to devalue you because they could see that their false character was not enough to sustain the illusion to sustain the relationship. It wasn't enough to do that. Because a relationship needs something real. It's not enough for it to just be a fantasy. Something that exists only in the imagination. It has to be something that exists in real life. It has to be something that has value, that has the ability to create. And yet they didn't have that to bring to a relationship. They came into it with a false character and manipulation in order to deceive you so that they could get what they wanted from you. And that's all that it was. And once you realize this, once you're on to it, you figure them out. Then it's time for you to leave. It's time for you to move on. And when you leave, when you depart, the narcissist is haunted by your absence because it becomes a reminder to them of how they have failed. They fail to succeed in a relationship with you, although they had the opportunity. And not only did they fail, but out of their frustration because of their own inadequacies, their own deficiencies, 
they then turned against you. They tried to bring you down to their level because they realized that they are incapable of building a relationship And with you, someone who is empathic, loving and compassionate, if they couldn't build something meaningful and worthwhile with you, they're not going to build anything with anyone. It's never going to amount to anything good. It's never going to be anything. Because they fail to achieve anything with you. And yet when you leave, when you depart and you move on, you notice that you develop a clear mind. You can finally think for yourself. It's like you can finally do something with your life. You can finally build something by yourself. And it's so much easier for you to do that without them. Because you couldn't do that while they were around. And when they see that, that also becomes a reminder to them of how they have failed. Because if you can move on and you can build something by yourself, and yet they couldn't do that with you, it just really reveals who was the problem in that situation. Because while you're by yourself, it's like there's nothing that you can't do. There's nothing that you can't accomplish, despite what they may have led you to believe. But as soon as you get around them, what happens? things start to go down for you. You're not doing as good as you were before. And then as soon as you leave, things begin to get better for you. Until finally they come back with a hoover. And why do they do that? It's because when you leave, when you depart, then they're left to their own devices. When they're not engaged with you, when they're not interacting with you, what do you think they're doing? when they're alone, if they can't attach to you, then they're forced to reflect on themselves. And that is the last thing any narcissist wants to do. They do not want to reflect on themselves. They don't wanna look at themselves. They do anything they can to distract, distract themselves from ever actually seeing who they are. They do not want to see that. That's why they engage in escapism. They have so many addictions, such as alcohol, tobacco, recreational drugs, shopping, gambling, whatever it takes to keep their mind off themselves. And while they were with you, it was also the love bombing, the fantasy, and then the devaluation, the abuse, even the triangulation and maybe smear campaigns as well, all of these things, they're developing attachments to you or to another person. Why? It's so that they don't have to reflect on themselves because they're not like us. They're self-absorbed, but they're only absorbed in their false character. They do not want to reflect on themselves. And that is why they can't be alone. That is why the last thing they want is to be left alone to their own devices, where they are no longer attached to you. Well, as for us, it may be the opposite. It's like when we were around them, all we wanted was just some time to ourselves, some time for us to think. Because then that brings us peace. We love it when we have time, space 
to reflect on ourselves and our own thoughts. It makes us feel better because we enjoy having that company with ourselves. And this is why they always badger you. They're so suffocating, they're always over your shoulder because they recognize that. Even though sometimes they may point the finger at you, call you the narcissist, say that there's all of these things wrong with you. But it's like if they would just go away, just leave the room for a moment so that you could self-reflect and think and just have that relationship with yourself. You'd be fine, you'd be happy. You'd be feeling good. And that's how you know that it isn't you. You are not the narcissist. You are not the abuser. You're not the crazy one. And just look at their behavior as it reveals that deep down they already know that. Because otherwise, that would be torture to you. And they would be giving you the silent treatment most of the time. If they believed, if they recognized you to be a toxic person, a narcissist, then they would cut contact with you. They would give you the silent treatment but they don't do that because they know for you that's going to be bliss. You would love nothing more than that. And I know that because many of you, you're quite comfortable by yourself watching YouTube videos, maybe reading books. You enjoy that time by yourself. You don't need another person in your space all of the time. But they do, they have to attach to someone. They can never feel good on their own. They never wanna look at themselves. They never want to self-reflect. They do anything they can to avoid self-reflection. And even when it seems like they're alone, they're probably up to something. They've got other sources of supply. Maybe they're drinking. They're taking drugs. They're doing something. Something that does not involve self-reflection or a relationship with oneself. They're just constantly involved in escapism. Not like what we're doing on here, talking about life, talking about relationships, talking about how we can make things better. They do not want to talk about that. That's why they don't give you closure. They don't give you an explanation for their behavior because they run from reality. They run from the truth. While well, it's the opposite for us, if someone brings the truth to us, we want to look at it. We want to understand what went wrong, what we can do to improve. Because we're just very different, we're opposites. For them, it's all just about blame and accusations. And of course, they never blame themselves. And that's just what you were to them while you were around. You were this emotional punching bag, this emotional tampon. You were this doormat to them. Someone who they could walk all over so that they could feel powerful, they could feel better about themselves. Because that's really the only thing that makes them feel good. It's the only thing that brings them any sort of joy. And even then it's not really joy, it's just a relief from their pain. From not having to 
see themselves or reflect on themselves because that's the last thing that they want to do. They don't even have a self. All they've got is just coping and defense mechanisms, which are very unhealthy. They don't develop healthy coping strategies. So of course, when you leave, when you depart and they're left to their own devices, if they are alone, and even if they are drinking or using drugs, they will still feel shame. And they will feel shame because of course they know when they look back, they can see how you came into it at the beginning. You put in a lot of work in that relationship. You did a lot of things for them. You did everything you could to make them happy. You were always there for them. You were at their beck and call. You did whatever they wanted you to do. You went out of your way. You made everything so easy for them. And yet, what do they give to you? Abuse, manipulation, deception. They did all of these things to you. So they were constantly using you to relieve their pain to distract themselves from themselves. And they were getting all of this from you and they still couldn't make the relationship work. That still wasn't enough for them. They still managed to destroy everything. And of course, they must recognize that contrast of how you came into the relationship and what you were like by the end, how you just went down after a certain amount of time. Of course, they must recognize that and realize that they caused that. They did that to you. They burned the bridge, they destroyed the relationship. So of course that's going to affect them. They're going to feel a lot of shame. They are shame-based individuals who are doing everything they can to avoid reflecting on their shame. So you can be sure that they will be trying to find some way to avoid feeling haunted by your absence, by your departure. They're gonna be engaging in one of their many coping and defense mechanisms there are many addictions. They're going to be doing all sorts of things. They're going to be shopping, gambling, drinking alcohol, taking drugs, going to bars, sleeping around. They're going to be doing all of these things, anything to just get their mind off of what they did to you. Because, because that's really what causes the shame. It's not so much about how they're just playing the victim and it's because of something you allegedly did to them. What haunts them is what they did to you. That affects them more than anything else. As studies have shown, bullies are at a 10 to 25 times more risk of developing a psychiatric condition than their own victims. And it's because of that shame. And it's that shame that drives them to abuse people even more. They have this shame abuse cycle. They feel shame, so they abuse because they can't deal with the shame. They don't want to reflect on it. And then when they abuse, they feel even more shame and it just piles up, it gets worse and worse. And then they engage in their many addictions. But sometimes it's like, no matter what they do, it's never enough. They can get drunk, they can take drugs, they can go shopping. 
They can gamble. They can do whatever they want, but sometimes it's just not enough to distract them, to get their mind off of what they've done to you. So sometimes it's like they're left with no choice but to come back and hoover you, to attach themselves to you again and to idealize you, to give you a fake apology, a false epiphany, just so that you validate them, even though they don't come back with any closure or an explanation for what they did to you. They come back like nothing happened. They wanna start all over again just to get that validation, to make themselves feel like they're okay. As though what they didn't do to you was that bad because if you take them back, if you remain around them, that's what it tells them. In their minds, it's like, if it was that bad, you wouldn't be around me. You would have left a long time ago. You wouldn't take me back. That's how they see it. And that's why when you reject them or when you leave them, what happens? It causes a narcissistic, narcissistic injury. They rage, they get mad, they lash out at you, they try to punish you. Because then it's telling them that maybe what they're doing is that bad. And then they start to feel the shame and then that's that shame abuse cycle again. So this is what happens with them. And sometimes it's like there's nothing they can do. Even with all their addictions, they just feel like they have to come back to you. They have to attach themselves to you. Who they feel like is the source of their pain, of their discomfort. Because of what they've done to you. So they either come back to idealize you and love bomb you. And then if you validate them, if you accept their apologies, then that makes them feel like they're okay. But then either way, that's still not enough. They still feel insecure. They still feel inadequate. So then they've got to go back to abusing you. And when they abuse you and you don't leave, you accept it. You find a way to justify it. You enable it. That tells them that what they're doing is not that bad. Even while they're using it to relieve their pain. So then it tells them that they're okay. And then at the same time, they can punish and blame you. Tell themselves that it's you, you're the problem. There's nothing wrong with them. They are in denial. The foundation of narcissism is denial. Without denial, a narcissist cannot be a narcissist. It's because they deny it. 322 live viewers, only 35 thumbs ups. Please hit the thumbs up and down below if you're finding this video helpful so far. It's very important as it helps to get this video out there so that other viewers can see it and benefit from this information as well. So please hit that thumbs up and down below. Show your support. Thank you. But yeah, without that denial, they can't do what they do. The denial needs to be present. It has to be there. And when you leave, when you depart from them, it's very difficult for them to deny who they are and what they've done. I just like to say that I'm sorry about the noise that's happening here. I did try to find this uh, this condo where I'm staying now on the 41st floor because I know when I was at the hotels before they were very noisy with all the cars outside but even though I'm on the 41st floor there's one floor above there's 42 floors here and there is a very noisy person as you can hear they're 
like dropping some small objects on the floor every few seconds. I do try going into the other room, but it follows me wherever I go around this room. So there's not too much I can do about it. And as you know, I do try to move around, but no matter where I go, it's always the same thing. So I will try to continue and try to do my best with what I have here. But yeah, the narcissism, it is characterized by their denial. They are denying themselves. They're disconnected from themselves. They're disconnected from their own emotions. They can't connect to themselves, so they cannot connect to you. They can't connect to their own emotions, so they can't connect to yours. And that's why they have this attachment disorder, because they lack empathy. They can't properly attach to you. But then it also creates this obsession because they can't detach from you as well. And that's how they're able to abuse you. It's how they're able to stalk and harass you. Because of this lack of empathy and this attachment disorder, which is typical of narcissists. It's typical of people with this personality disorder. It's like they need you to make them feel whole, to fill this void, this big gaping hole, to make them feel like they're okay, like nothing is wrong with them to provide them with a false sense of self, to make them feel powerful, rather than feeling helpless and insecure. They've got to have someone who, when they're around, they can play this role. They can be the authority. They can be the judge, jury and executioner. They can blame, bully and punish you. Even though when you step back and really look at that, it doesn't really make any sense. Because how can someone bully and intimidate you while at the same time blame and punish you as well? But that's exactly how they are. It's how their disorder functions. Because they can't ever look at themselves. They can't ever blame themselves. The disorder is not set up to function in that way. And that's why when you do leave, when you do depart, and they're left to their own devices, they begin to reflect on their shame. And then that's why they engage in escapism. They turn to their many addictions. They seek out new sources of supply. And in some cases, that's still not enough. So then they have to return to you. They have to return to you because of all of the things they did to you. It created this bond. And I know some people say that it's the victims who are trauma bonded to the narcissist, but believe it or not, in many situations, it's actually the narcissist who is more trauma bonded to you because of their shame, which they deny and deflect. We can reflect on our shame and that's how we're able to disconnect from them. They don't reflect on their shame. They push it away. They deflect it. And that's how they end up trauma bonded to us. And they can't detach from us and then they develop this obsession, they stalk and harass us, they hoover us so many times. And it's because they lack a sense of self. They're disconnected from themselves and their emotions. So they've got to attach themselves to something so that they can feel 
Like they're worth something. Because going within themselves, they can't do that. It's painful for them. That doesn't make them feel good. But when they attach to you, that makes them feel better about themselves. And many of you, of course, it's because you're empaths, you're chosen ones. You've got that beautiful energy that they want. And they may never tell you this, but it's true. Yes, they feel good when they're around you. They feel better about themselves. I don't know. You may be thinking when you look back, it didn't look like they felt good around you at all because they were devaluing you. They were always mad. They were always upset about something. But that's how you should know. In that state, they felt a lot better than they normally do. They'd rather feel that anger, that rage, than to feel that shame. A narcissist would prefer to feel anger than shame. That's why they attach themselves to us. They blame us, they punish us. They abuse us because it's just anything, whatever it takes to just distract them from that shame. They would rather feel pride, but they can't always feel that way around you after a certain amount of time. As I said at the beginning of the, uh, the, beginning of the video, it's like, you invest your time, your energy, your effort into something, into a partnership, a relationship. It should amount to something, but with them it doesn't. So then they feel insecure. They realize that they're not good enough to make things happen, to build the relationship up. So then they get angry. They rage because they reflect on their shame. They realize that they're just not good enough. They don't get to feel that pride anymore, that arrogance. So then they settle for the anger rather than to have to experience their shame. I know these objects drop in, might be quite distracted. It's been going on for quite some time. So I'm going to try and go over here now. Three hundred and forty-four live viewers. Please hit the thumbs up button down below. Show your support. Let's come out by the balcony. Very high up, up here. As you can see on the opposite side, I'm on the forty-first floor. Unfortunately, there is one floor above me. And that's where all the noise is coming from. That mysteriously seems to follow me around the room. Otherwise, I'm sure there would be good energy up here. Since I'm quite far off the ground. Try not to drop my phone. Probably won't get it back if I do. Yes, they do feel haunted by your departure. But remember, they are shame-based people who are doing everything they can to avoid reflecting on their shame. So, unlike you or myself, 
when a relationship ends for us, someone leaves us, we get into a fight. We don't typically get angry about that, unless maybe we were, we were being abused. What typically happens with us is we do feel self-conscious. We do question ourselves. We feel bad about ourselves. We wonder if we could have done something more. We overthink, we overanalyze. And we grieve. We miss that person. We feel bad that they're gone. And narcissists play on that as well. They deflect the shame onto us. They make us feel like we're at fault, as though something is wrong with us. But as for them, when you leave, when you depart, they don't feel their shame. They don't feel bad, they don't feel regret. They don't feel remorse, they don't feel like they could have done better for you, they could have done more, or that they didn't treat you right. They're not thinking like that. Narcissists do not want to reflect on their shame. They will do anything to avoid reflecting on that. They will seek new sources of supply. They will hoover you, they will re-engage with you again. Or they will turn to one of their many addictions. They will engage in escapism. Anything they have to do to avoid reflecting on that shame. Some of them may even go as far as to take their own lives they feel like there's nothing else that they can do as a last resort they would rather take their own lives than to deal with the shame that's how bad it is for a narcissist and that's why when you do leave when you do depart or when you confront them or when you threaten to expose them what happens. It causes a narcissistic injury and then they rage. And why do they rage? It's because of that shame abuse cycle. They feel the shame so then they rage and they abuse. Because they would rather rage and abuse than to feel the shame. They project it outwards. They try to hurt you. Whereas with someone who has borderline personality disorder, which I know I don't speak about that much on this channel, but just as an example, someone with borderline, they tend to be more inclined to self-loathe. Just as we do as victims. If someone leaves us, or even if someone abuses us, they blame us, we tend to go within and then we question ourselves, we blame ourselves. We feel shame, we feel bad about ourselves. But for narcissists, it's the opposite. They don't go within because they're disconnected from themselves and their emotions. And because of that, they lack like empathy so they can't connect to us. They can't connect to our emotions. They can't feel what we feel. So then instead, they just deflected it onto us. Whatever they feel, they project it. They feel bad about themselves, so then they try to make us feel bad. They feel shame, so then they shame us. They feel hurt. So then they rage and they try to hurt us. As within, so without. How a person treats you is a direct reflection of how they feel about themselves. And so this is why they do what they do. This is why they treat us the way that they do. It's all because of how they feel about themselves and because of their their inability to deal with their own emotions. I mean, they're really just like 
children in adult bodies. Although even children are better to be around than that. They're pure, they're innocent. Whereas with narcissists, they're very mean. And they would have hurt you. But yeah, that's one thing that they do have in common is that they haven't developed emotionally to the point where they are able to deal with their emotions. And that's really what their disorder is all about. It's this inability to deal with their own emotions. And that's how you know exactly what you're dealing with because they never come to you and try to resolve anything. Because they can't even resolve what's going on inside of themselves. They can't regulate how they feel. So how can they regulate anything outside of themselves? How can they work with you? How can they be there for you? How can they comfort you? As you can be there for them, you can try to comfort them all you want. It's not going to help. It's not going to make a difference. Because they're emotionally underdeveloped. And this is why when you leave, when you depart, what do they do? They can't deal with the shame, so they turn to one of their many addictions. They seek new sources of supply. Or they re-engage with you again, they hoover you. They come back like nothing happened, no closure, no explanation. They just idealize you and they just expect things to go back to normal. And then after a few days, they go back to abusing you again. Because that shame comes back up. They realize that they just can't do it. They're not capable of sustaining a relationship with anyone. And it's because they're incapable of regulating their own, uh, their own emotions. It's always someone else to blame. It's always someone else's fault. They just can't accept who they are being. They disconnect from themselves. And that's how they can't connect to you. But this shame that they feel as a result of the things that they have done in the past and the things that they have done to you, it will continue to grow inside of them because they don't go within, they don't self-reflect. If a narcissist self-reflected, you would know because they would come back and try to make amends and not just give you a fake apology, a false epiphany. It would actually be real. And they would take the steps to make it a reality. So instead, the shame continues to grow inside of them. And they continue to push it away. They continue to deflect it. They continue to disconnect more and more from themselves and their emotions to where they just completely lose that sensitivity. They don't feel anything. As you may think, when you look in their social media, it looks like they found someone else, they've moved on, they're living their best lives. No, they're not. It's all fake. They don't feel anything. They're disconnected from themselves and their emotions. They never take the time to deal with their shame. So how can they feel happiness? How can they feel joy when they can't even deal with their own shame? They can't even process that emotion. And you've got to process that first before you can experience true love and happiness. So that's how you know that it's all a lie. They just live in a fantasy just as they were in the beginning with you, when they love bombed you, that wasn't even real. They were just reflecting your own qualities and virtues back to you. And they were able to do that because they were getting that energy from you. These narcissists will never be happy. They will never experience true love or joy. 
They will never have anything with anyone. They will never have anything real. And you know that because they didn't care about you. They didn't care about you. They didn't come back and try to make amends for real. It was all pretend. It's all fake with a narcissist. It's all just make-believe. They're never happy. They're never happy. Just look back and remember what they were like with you. For a narcissist, I mean, the emotions that they really experience are pride, anger, and desire. They always want something to fill that void, to make them feel complete, even though it never does. That's why they have that desire. And when they do fulfill a desire, they don't really feel it. They don't really experience any happiness or joy. They just feel pride. They just feel like they're better than other people. They provoke envy and jealousy in them so that they can live vicariously through them because they can't find satisfaction in it for themselves because they're disconnected from themselves so they can't connect to anyone. So yeah, they experience that desire, that pride. And if they can't fulfill a desire, then they feel anger. Then they feel anger. They'd rather feel pride. They'd rather get that validation, their narcissistic supply. That's their diamond source of supply. But if they can't get that, they will settle for anger as a result of not being able to achieve their desires. Because then by being angry, blaming and accusing people, they can still get that cool level of narcissistic supply. Anything for them is supply, as long as they're not reflecting on their shame. So they're fine to settle with anger, even though they would prefer pride. But it does haunt them. When you leave, when you depart, they do feel it. Because they don't reflect on their shame. So that shame continues to grow within them. And yeah, they try to push it away, they deflect it. But things do keep coming up. they will keep confronting it. There will be small windows of reflection where they might go out somewhere and people might ask about what happens between you and them. They might ask why the relationship ended, why you're no longer together. And of course, narcissists are very defensive. They'll always have some reason or excuse for that. But at first, they will have that small window of self-reflection, of experiencing that shame, and then they'll try to push it away. So there's always gonna be times when it keeps coming up. After they've left you, they may see someone else who's in a happy relationship, and then that may remind them of what they did to you, how they treated you. That shame will come up again. And they'll always try to find ways to regulate their emotions and to suppress the shame, to deny it. Engaging in their many addictions, seeking new sources of supply. Anything to distract themselves. But you will know when they have failed in trying to replace you. 
or when their addictions are no longer working for them because then they will try to come back to hoover you they will re-engage with you again because it's like there's nothing out there that can numb the pain that they feel inside because that shame is there they know who they are at some level they know what they've done And they feel like the only way they can resolve it, the only way that they can numb the pain is to attach themselves to you. Because whether they recognize it or not, you are the source of their pain, of their discomfort. Because it's that shame. They know what they did to you. As I've said in past videos, this is why when you break up with a narcissist, when you leave them, and then if they come back with a hoover and you do let them back in, then what happens? Then... Maybe you have this makeup sex and it's like everything's good again. It's like the entire time they were devaluing you, they were abusing you. And then they come back and it's like the best sex that you've ever had with them. Maybe the best that you've ever had since the beginning of the relationship. Because with you being the source of their pain and they're doing anything, anything they can to avoid reflecting on the shame and it's like there's nothing out there that can numb that pain. They may go out to bars and clubs and try to drown their sorrows, engage in their many addictions, seek new sources of supply. But it's never going to be the same. They may try to find you in someone else, but they never do. And you may see it when you look at some of the people they're involved with. It's almost like they're trying to make them into you. They're trying to replace you. But they never can. They never do. And that's why they come back and attach themselves to you. And it's like you make up. And it's like the best sex you ever had. Because they were really seeking that validation to let them know that maybe they're not so bad. Maybe they are okay after all. And I know that sounds great. It's like, all right, all you got to do, just leave the door unlocked, leave the door open for them. And then they can come back and you can clap those cheeks or they can clap yours. And everything's going to be good. Everything's going to be right again. No, it never works out that way. I mean, when they come back initially, it may be the best sex that you've had with them because they're really craving that validation to let them know that maybe what they did wasn't so bad. Maybe they're not such a bad person after all because you're willing to let them back in. You're willing to have sex with them again. You're willing to share the bed with them. But they can't sustain it. They can't keep it up for long. And that's why at some point they begin to feel the shame and then they turn against you again. The cycle of abuse continues. They devalue you again. That's why that happens. And on average, a victim of narcissistic abuse gets over seven times before it's finally all over. And I've been there, I know what that's like. And I can tell you the sex, the love, the affection. All of these things get worse and worse the more that you take them back. And what also gets worse as well is the abuse. It just becomes normalized over time. 
they've done it to you before, so they feel like, why can't they come back and do that again and do worse? Because you accepted it before. Or they might just try to push you just to the edge of what you were willing to tolerate before, before you left them. This is why you cannot let them back in. You cannot let them back in. And even if it is just to have sex, because that will trauma bond you to them. And it does that for you as well, where it's like, because they may have blamed you, they may have made you feel bad about yourself as though something was wrong with you. And then it's like when you let them back in and you're intimate with them again, it's like it, it tells you then, if I was that bad, if I was such a horrible person, if I was really to blame, then why would they come back to me? Why would they have sex with me again? And then you're seeking their validation, you're hooked on them again. You're trauma bonded. And the more that they come back, even though the love, the affection, and the, the sex may get worse and worse, that bond becomes stronger. That bond becomes stronger. The more that you let them back in that door, it does, it creates an addiction. Because it's like a drug. You become hooked on their validation. And what you need to do to resolve this is become hooked on the love and the validation that you give to yourself. Because that's what's going to counteract this. Where it's like even when they come back, you found something. Something that makes you feel good. Spending time by yourself, getting to know yourself again. Rebuilding this relationship with yourself to the point where that feels better than to give them another chance. And that's really it. As Ross Rosenberg said in one of his videos, our self-love it's our greatest defense against narcissists. And that's why they try to make us dislike ourselves. They target our self-esteem because they want to be our only source of influence and validation because then they're better able to control us and they can do whatever they want to us. And we're gonna stay, we're not gonna leave. If we do leave, it will only be for a certain amount of time. And then when they come back to re-engage, we just let them back in. Because that defense of self-love is not strong enough. And that's why we need to rebuild that. We need to learn to love ourselves. And it's not like uh, that last song with Neo. It's not like you you got to let them love you until you learn to love yourself. <laughs> not with an narcissist, no. you got to keep them out and learn to love yourself on your own. <laughs> That's the only way that it's going to work. You can't do that with them. You're just going to become dependent on their validation and that's not going to be any good for you. And then when you develop that self-love and you learn to validate yourself, you've healed to a certain point. Then you can get involved with someone who also loves and validates themselves. 
And that's really the best relationship to be in. Where two people both have that self-love and they're both capable of validating themselves. And it's like you don't need each other's validation because you can already validate yourself. But it feels good. It feels nice when that person that you love does validate you and does care about you. Because even though you may not need that validation, there's nothing wrong with wanting it. We are human beings, we're social creatures. So yes, we do desire that validation. Every human needs validation, external validation as well. I mean, we can validate ourselves for a certain amount of time, but at some point we do need that external validation as well. Just make sure that you get that from the right person rather than from a narcissist who's only going to manipulate and exploit you for that. But rest assured, they will be haunted by your absence, by your departure. They will be haunted by that. It will affect them. And just remember when they were with you, how they were always so angry, always so moody, always taking things out on you. That is an effect of the the absence of who you were at the beginning. When you were once validating their false character. And it could also be because of the absence of a past source of supply as well. And that's how it's going to be in their next relationship with their new source. They're going to feel your absence. It's going to affect them if it hasn't already. And they're going to do whatever they can to try to cope with that. They will deny reality. They will engage in their many addictions to try to numb the pain. And they will be seeking new sources of supply. And it's not like, I mean, you may be looking at it on social media, thinking that they're having a great time, they're living their best lives without you. And now they're flaunting it for, the, for you to see, to hurt you. That just reveals that they're hurt. It just reveals that they're not happy. Because they know what they did to you. They know how they treated you. And when they leave and try to move on, they're not really running from you. They're running from a reflection of themselves that they do not like. That's all that they're really doing. And they're gonna keep running from person to person, place to place, trying to find you in someone else, but guess what, they never will. They're never gonna find someone else like you. They're never going to find another empath, another chosen one, another person who cared as much about them as you did. Because I know many of you, you did care a lot. 
you were always there for them. You put up with so many things. So many things that they did to you. But despite all of that, you stuck in it until the very end, until you couldn't take it anymore. And you did that for them. You did that out of love. But no matter what you do, it is never enough. When you do things for a narcissist, when you try to build them back up, what happens? They don't become vulnerable. They don't reflect on their shame. They don't try to be better. So what do they do? They just go from experiencing that anger or desire to then experiencing pride. The selfish pride where it's all about them. And these are really the emotions that dominate them. Pride, anger, fear, desire, guilt, and shame. They don't experience positive emotions. Sometimes it may look like they do, but they don't. It could be that they're experiencing desire. They're hunting down their next source of supply or they're re-idealizing you. Or once they've re-attained you or they've attained a new source of supply, then they experience that pride. So it's either that desire or pride. They're not really happy. They're not really fulfilled with anything. And that's how no matter what they have, no matter what they get into at some point, that pride soon turns to desire again. And if they can't fulfill that desire, then what happens? That desire then turns to anger. Because they'd rather feel that anger, they'd rather rage than having to reflect on their shame. And I know we don't speak about this enough, but this is the core of it. This is the basis of narcissism. It really is that denial. That's where the pride, the desire, the anger comes from. It's the denial of who they actually are, what they've been doing, suppressing their shame, disconnecting from themselves and their emotions. This is the core of it all. This is the basis of this disorder. This is why they act the way that they do. This is it. And by knowing this, you know that they will be haunted by your absence. They will be haunted by losing you. And they will forever try to replace you, to search for you in another person, but guess what? They will never find you. They're never gonna find you in anyone else because there's only one you. And the odds are that they are never going to find another empath, another chosen one. Because as I've said in past videos, statistics show that only 1-2% to of the world's population are empaths. So what are the odds that they're going to find another you? 
What are the odds that they are going to find another empath, another chosen one? Of course, that is very unlikely. But even if they do, as Zion often says in some of his videos, as I have been watching myself, and I completely agree with this, even if they do find another empath, another chosen one, that doesn't mean that they're going to be able to supply them in the way that you do. Remember, narcissists, they're accustomed to your supply, to your way of doing things. As Zion has said in his videos, and it's very true. So even in that extremely rare case, I mean, it's a miracle that they even found you, but in that extremely rare case that they do find another empath, they're not going to be able to do it like you do. They're not going to be able to do it like that for them. Only you can do that. Only you can be that. No one else can replace you. You are one of a kind. You're irreplaceable. Not like with narcissists. All of these narcissists around the world, so they all act exactly the same. That's how we can get on here and speak about this. And it's like, no matter what part of the world you're from, you watch my videos, I do swear that I know you're a narcissist in person. <laughs> because they're all pretty much exactly the same. They all share the same traits. They all do the same things. They all follow the same cycle, the same patterns of behavior. Well, as for us, chosen ones, empaths, yes, well, we, we do have that in common. We're empaths, we're chosen ones, but we're also very unique. No two empaths, no two chosen ones are the same. We are all different. We are all unique. We all have our own individual preferences and characteristics, our own personalities. Because we're individuals. Well, as for narcissists, what they have is a disorder. A personality disorder, which means that you could find someone else just like them, just around the corner. Someone who will treat you in the exact same way. They'll do the exact same things as they did. But it's like, why would you want that in your life? Why would you want someone who treats you that way? Of course you wouldn't. But luckily for us, from my experiences and from what I've researched, like does attract like. So we do have a much better chance at finding an empath like ourselves because they're going to resonate with us. And just look at me, I am proof of that because I've built this community. I've got almost 180,000 subscribers, many of which have been involved with narcissists, many of which are empaths, chosen ones. I'm not saying that everyone is, I mean, unfortunately, as we know, there are COVID narcissists who 
play the victim? Are they being gaslighting themselves their entire lives? They actually believe that they are victims, some of them. So not everyone on this channel is an empath, a chosen one. But many of them are. Many of them are drawn to me, attracted to me. The things that I do, the things that I talk about, the way in which I am. And this is proof right here. Like does attract like. Empaths are attracted to each other. So we do have a much better chance of finding an empath than the narcissist does at replacing us with someone like ourselves. And even in that extremely rare case where they could, it doesn't mean that they're going to be like us because we're all different, we're all unique. And even then, it's never like you think it is. Because sometimes we make these assumptions, we assume that their experiences are the same as ours, when they're not. They don't experience life in the way that we do. They don't experience love, intimacy, relationships. They don't even care about any of that. What they care about is manipulation and control. So don't think that they've moved on and they're love bombing someone else. And now they're enjoying this intimate moment, this romance, they're falling in love. It's never going to be like that for a narcissist. They're self-absorbed and they lack empathy. And how do you know that? They didn't care about you. They couldn't connect to you. They couldn't feel what you feel. All they did was manipulate and control you. Until the point where they got tired and they couldn't do it anymore. And then maybe then they discarded you. So don't make these assumptions, don't assume that they've moved on, they found someone else, and now they're falling in love. They're enjoying this romance, this intimacy. Honestly, they don't care about that. It doesn't even cross their minds. And I know some of you, you may be thinking, well, Maybe not for some narcissists, but as for mine, well, I went on their social media and it looks like they're holding each other, they're kissing. They're going for these long walks on the beach, holding hands, they're having these candlelight dinners. It may look that way, but actually that's only because they know you're watching. That's just for you. It's intended to hurt you. Because they knew all along that was what you wanted, but they couldn't give that to you. Because they didn't even care about that. They didn't have the motivation to even want to do that. Because it doesn't do anything for them. The only time that it does do something for them is when they can use it to hurt you. It's kind of like, if you imagine, if you saw them in person, I mean, let's just imagine this hypothetical situation just to have a laugh for a moment. But yeah, it's like, just imagine, and I wouldn't be surprised, some of you may have experienced this already. And actually, I spoke to a client a few years ago, I remember, 
And she told me that this is something that happened to her. Where it's like, they might walk past your house with their new sauce. And maybe they'll be holding hands, they'll be holding each other. Or that they're like, looking through your window. They're peering over at you to see if you're looking. <laughs> And it's like they're not even enjoying it. It's not even doing anything for them. It's only just to see if they can get a reaction out of you. That's as far as it goes. Other than that, it doesn't bring them any joy, any fulfillment. They're only doing it for you. That's all that it's for. That's all that it's about. And you should know that because look at how they treated you. They didn't care about you. It was all just about manipulation and control. So there's no need to feel jealous. There's no need to feel like you've lost something of value because trust me, you haven't. All you've lost is abuse, manipulation, a liar, a fraud, Someone who is only going to waste even more of your time, even more of your youth, even more of what's rest of your life. That's all that you've lost. That's all that you're missing out on. You did not lose something of value. What you lost was the problem. What you lost was something that was no good for you. And you should be glad that it's gone. Well, for them, they may look like they've moved on. They may come back to re-engage with you. It may look like they've moved on, but really, it is flaunting in the new source on social media, trying to hurt you, trying to make you jealous. Because that's the only thing that helps them to deflect their shame, to make them feel better about themselves. Otherwise, they'll be engaging in their many addictions drinking alcohol, using recreational drugs, shopping, gambling, doing whatever it takes to just completely disconnect from themselves. And you've got to think, what kind of a life is, is that? Where you can't even accept yourself. You have to disconnect from yourself. I mean, that's really sad. Well, you just have to pretend. You have to pretend like things are okay. You have to pretend like you're happy when deep down you're miserable inside. And that's really it. We can learn a lesson from them by not doing what they do. By recognizing that it is important for us to be vulnerable to express how we feel, to be comfortable with our emotions. Because having that acceptance is then what allows us to experience true love, peace, happiness, and joy. Which of course, as empaths, that's what we want. Anyway, it's getting quite late here. It's 
just turned midnight. I'm going to have a shower and get some sleep. But I do hope that you found this video helpful. I know we went really deep on this one. Some things that I've spoken about before. But yeah, I really went in depth on this one. And I hope that it's helped you to understand the inner workings, the inner functioning of this disorder and why they behave the way that they do. And remember, if you would like to show your support to our community and help to get this message out there so that other survivors can see it and benefit from this information as well, you can give it a thumbs up down below which will help the YouTube algorithm so that there will be more impressions and more people will be able to see it. And you can also donate by leaving a super chat in this live chat or a super thanks in the comment section. And you can also go to my PayPal. It is paypal.me slash survivor. Hit subscribe and click all notifications to be notified when I upload a new video or when I go live in the future. And if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, just go to my website. It is narcsurvivor.co.uk. And also, you can follow me on Instagram I have new pictures and videos of my travels, which I upload to my stories every day on there. And I am also now uploading pictures and videos from last year's travels when I went to Sri Lanka. So you can also see that on my Instagram as well. Follow me. It is Narc Survivor YouTube on Instagram. All right, that's it. that's it for this live video. Live from the 41st floor. You know how I do. Thanks for the donation. Myrna E. Gyron, I appreciate it. Thank you all for joining me on another narc survivor live video i do appreciate you all and as always i look forward to speaking with you in another live video very soon